All right, we have some uh, stair details here along with a few grades. So um, let's read the instructions. The upper grade is 2.8, the lower grade is zero. Create a staircase using extrusions to navigate the grade difference. Use two different methods. So if I was uh, asked to do this, there are two things that I would think about. Um, I'm always thinking about what is the most efficient way to model something. Um, and in this case, I think that both of these um, have, have their bonuses and their cons, but there's one that actually makes a lot more sense than another. But I'm going to start with um, something that you might have thought of to begin with, which is just to use box extrusions to create these stairs. So I'm going to go over here to the box and ex um, expand this down to um, to the cascaded menu, and then I'm going to select a box from three points. So I'm going to start to draw in this box using one of the stairs as a reference. So now I can elevate this, but how far do I need to elevate it? Well, if we take a look at this staircase, I'm just gonna ex exit that command for a second and move to my top view. We know that this is 2.8, we know that this is zero. And how many stairs do we have in between? If we think about these as stairs in plan view, we can think about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We're raising up 14 steps to get to the 2.8 level. So to calculate how high each tread is, um, we just need to take 2.8 and divide it by 14, and we get a height of 0.2. So 20 centimeters or eight inches is a very common stair height. Um, in public space, it usually ranges between six to eight inches or 15 to 20 centimeters. And we never have differences in our step heights because we want a consistent staircase where people know as they're walking, they're not gonna encounter different heights. So we can be sure that each of these risers is 20 centimeters high every time somebody is climbing up the stairs. And we have a couple landings in between. So I'm gonna go back to my um, perspective view and look at my box command again. I'll cascade that down, box from three points. And I'm just going to draw in my box and rise it up by 0.2. So that actually lowered it down um, so I'm just going to move this using a corner to lift it up to that. And now to create the rest of my stairs, I can just copy and paste from corner to corner to create the staircases. So I'm going to do a CO, which is copy, selecting it from this corner and bringing it up to this corner and again and again. So now we have our first four stairs and that's great. Um, but now we need to get this other landing. So we could either do another box that is the same shape as this landing and elevate it by 0.2 and then move that using our corners here. So that's one way to create a landing. I'm going to show you another way. So if we duplicate another one of these stairs like that, we can also use the move face command. We've looked at move edge, which we used to move edges of surfaces, but we can also move faces of solid objects. So I'm going to use move face. I'm just typing it in like that. I'm gonna select this face because we want this face to extend to this line. I'll press enter and I'm going to uh, move this and you see that it's, um, has a direction constraint of normal. So if I uh, change this to none, then I would be dragging this face down to this, um, this line down here. But instead, I'm just gonna re-enter the command. If we change this to normal, basically a normal is an orthogonal direction. So if I now try to move the edge and I match it up with this line, the edge is going to stay in the Y orientation and I can just extend it like that. 
there's actually a third way to do this. So there's always more than one way to do something. So I'm just gonna undo so I have this step. We can use a scale 1D. This is a scale in one dimension. So I'm gonna select the stair as my object to scale and press enter. And I'm gonna start the base point here at the edge. The first reference point is the end of the staircase. And the second reference point is the end of the landing down here. So again, there's always more than one way to do something. And it's really important that you have experience and understand um, all of the options that you have available to you. Now to build the rest of the staircase really efficiently, um, what I might do is just begin copying and pasting some of these. So we know we have one, two stairs here and then a landing, one, two stairs and a landing. So I'm going to select two stairs here and my landing and I'm gonna copy from this point and paste them to this point. I'm gonna paste them to this point. I'm gonna paste them to this point. And now I can use one of the methods um, that I learned about scaling or moving the face of this object to extend it to the end of the landing up here. So I'm gonna use move face, select my face, select my base point, and select my reference point. Now I have my, my top landing. And to get my um, bottom landing, of course, I could just copy this from this corner down to this corner. And now I have my staircase, complete staircase. Now, uh, you might be wondering like, well, what about the construction underneath the staircase? But when we're 3D modeling, we don't really need to build in anything that is not gonna be visible um, to the drawings that we're creating. So usually we're doing these for the purposes of visualization at eye level, or we're using them to create plans or sections. So of course in section, um, if you really wanted to, you could try to model in some of the supports or the underground materials of this, but I would never do that as a 3D model unless I was trying to create something for production, like for a prototype or for a 3D model or something like that. By 3D model, I mean a 3D physical model. But in this case, um, and in most cases, all we care about is that it looks right from the top. If we needed to cut a section through these stairs and uh, and draft um, additional detail, we could use these as the starting point and then just draft in the construction details that are underneath the ground. Since you don't know what those are anyways at that point, um, then I would recommend that you just do what looks right uh, from the top. Okay, now that is actually the long way to do this. There's a much faster way to build this staircase. And I don't know if you have figured it out in your mind yet, but I'm just going to demonstrate it for you here. What we have um, on this staircase is basically a profile of steps that go up and up and up. So I'm just gonna draft in a profile and I'm gonna use a polyline to do that. So I'm gonna start here and go here. And then I'm gonna turn on my orthographic uh, mode here so that I'm only working at set angles. I can only um, draw in specific angles that are dictated by um, this, this specific orthographic setting. So the ortho angle I have now is 45, which means my lines are constrained to 0, 45, 90, etc. So that's exactly what I want. And I'm going to raise this by 0.2 because I know my riser is 0.2. And then I'm going to draw the um, tread of the stair here, 0.2, tread, 0.2, tread. All right, so now I have my staircase and I'm just going to rotate it by um, 90 degrees so that it's vertical. I can do that by um, using my gumball like this. Oh, I have to turn off my ortho mode first. So 
So I have uh, my staircase at 90 degrees, and now I can orient it to the corner of my um, plan. And now I can just use the extrude command. So when we extrude, it doesn't have to be a closed polyline. We can just use any line and extrude it. So EXT for extrude. And I'm just going to drag this across the entire uh, width of the staircase. And now looks identical in plan and section. Um, actually, in section, it doesn't look identical. That's correct. This one has thicknesses, whereas this one is just a line. But depending on what types of drawings you're producing, um, that is uh, could be all you really need. So um, this is the fastest way to do it, is just to draw a profile and extrude it along the site. This one gives you a little bit more thicknesses and more surfaces to work from. Um, so yeah, those are two ways to draw in a staircase. This last exercise, I'm going to ask you, um, actually it's the second last exercise. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to try to complete it on your own. It says create a step terrace with concrete seating edges. The grades are denoted. So maybe what you want to do is start by um, copying this staircase uh, down to this um, part of the site over here and use that as your starting point. And then let's just see, um, you would want to basically begin building from there. And it looks like in this, I might have accidentally, uh, let's see, did I? Yeah, I might have accidentally moved these profile edges um, uh, incorrectly. So what we're gonna do is just move the edge of this surface back here. It didn't work because I have a direction constraint on, so I'm just going to remove that. There we go. All right, so this is your starting point, and um, I hope that you have learned enough about extrusions and um, moving and shifting and scaling that you can begin to build up some of these uh, elements yourself.